Hi, and welcome to And So Much More. My name is Cami Smith, and I am here with Dr. William Weber, who is our trauma medical director, as well as Sarah Beth Dinwiddie, who is our trauma program director. And we are going to be talking about um, a class today, which we are not going to instruct you today, but we're going to talk to you about the importance of this class. The class is called Stop the Bleed. And um, and there's so many whys behind this class. But before we get there, um, I want these two wonderful experts in this area to just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dig into this program that we have access to. Uh, I'll start. I'm, I'm Billy Weber. I'm the trauma medical director here at, uh, at Centra and Lynchburg General Hospital. Um, I kind of got my start in all this. I went to college, didn't really think about becoming a doctor. I was a I was a reservist in the military. Uh, wound up wound up serving in Iraq as an infantryman, and so all of this stuff that we're going to talk about today is stuff that we learned we learned in preparing to go over to combat. Hopefully, none of us are going to combat, um, but I think that these are lessons that can be very useful. And then after I came back, I started looking into what I wanted to do, and that's when I decided to go to medical school. And I, I went to medical school at VCU in Richmond, and then I went to the University of Kentucky for residency, and I did fellowship down in Dallas at Baylor University Medical Center. And then I came here. That's awesome. I, you're, it's so funny to hear like the history of how you got here, because it's, it's very different. It's very unique than what you typically hear. People are like, I, want, I wanted to be a doctor my whole life. <laughs> it's very cool that you ended up here when you realized that you, this was something you had a passion for. No, I didn't even particularly want to go to college. I wanted to... Uh... <laughs> I wanted to just finish school and kind of be done with that. And then, you know, I found myself in college and finished it pretty well, did well enough to apply to medical school later That's on. That's awesome. So. Very cool. Okay. And Sarah Beth, what about you? So I'm I'm the trauma program director here. Um, I've been here not quite a year yet, but my nursing background began in high school when I was volunteering as a candy striper and fell in love with the trauma population. And okay. we had, had a couple of patients when I was young who I really just wanted to be involved and be able to help make their journey easier. Um, and so I went to nursing school. I went to the University of Arkansas. Um, and then I was able to travel around the country a little bit, seeing different areas and different um, emergency rooms. And then mm -hmm. I was at Carilion for many years as a um, team lead in their ER and then have worked for their trauma service program for about seven years since okay. then and have just recently come to Centra and I'm loving um, Lynchburg and the forest area and being able to be involved in the hospital programs and yeah, it's... deliver trauma care. That's very cool. It, it's a beautiful area. I feel like we're very blessed to live in a beautiful area. And you know, for a long time, I considered this a, an extremely safe area. And I think I still do. But I think I'm part of the majority who lived in that that could never happen to me bubble. Like not, I live in a safe area. Like, you know, like I can walk my dog at night and it's fine. Um, and I think that that is a very, uh, very dangerous place to live in assumption in that way, as we're finding out if we just turn the news on. And so um, this program we're talking about today, Stop the Bleed, as you can imagine, um, is a very specific program to stop the bleed. So um, Dr. Weber, why don't you start? What can you tell us about the program? So this all originated out of, um, out of the tragedy that happened at Sandy Hook Elementary School, um, where a gunman went into an elementary school. After that, uh, President Obama commissioned a group where they went to the nearest trauma center and they had trauma experts from all around the country meet. And that was called the Hartford Group. And they came out with a document called the Hartford Consensus, mm -hmm. where they looked, at, they looked at violence and the response to violence and said, what can we do to reduce the loss of life? And this really grew out of a larger effort from the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma, as well as the National Association of EMTs. Um, partially funded by the Department of Defense. And so a lot of people had their hands in this. Mm -hmm. But when they looked at it, they looked at both combat casualties and civilian casualties from similar incidents. And they realized that there's a very high percentage of people who are dying from treatable injuries, from, from extremity bleeding. Mm -hmm. And so when they looked at this, they made some specific recommendations. And one of the really big and important recommendations that they made and one of the really important realizations is that by providing 
rapid response and, and rapid treatment of bleeding, a lot of these patients are able to survive to reach, to reach definitive care, namely yeah. at the hospital. Yeah. So basically the purpose of this program is to just get them to us. You know, I think I heard you say that earlier. Um, help us by, by getting them to us. We have, we have a trauma surgeon here in Lynchburg who is in the hospital 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We are required to see injured patients in the emergency department within 15 minutes of their arrival. And we meet that metric pretty much every time. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're available. We're here. If you can get somebody to us, there's a whole lot that we can do. We have, we have so many resources at the hospital. Mm -hmm. But if people are if people are getting injured in the in the field, if people are getting non-survivable injuries in the field, there's nothing that we can do. So, and whoever can speak to this, how did this program get to Centra? So this was something that was out of a situation certainly felt by, I think, anyone who heard about it. I think the Sandy Hook kind of shook us all to our core. How did this specific program make its way here to Central Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia? There's been a, a real push from the state um, and out to the trauma centers. Mm -hmm. And so it's really been a requirement for trauma centers to be able to offer the Stop the Bleed course. Okay. Um, centers, our trauma nurse specialists have been pretty involved in the community for the last several years okay. teaching the classes. And they've done um, numerous school nurses groups. Um, they've gone into some of the schools and taught some students. Yes. Um, so they have been pretty involved um, I love that. Probably for the last four or five years. Yeah. One of the things that they looked at when they brought this program out was we have we already have ACLS. We already have we already have CPR courses and basic first aid courses. And the likelihood that most people are going to encounter somebody who has a cardiac arrest in front of them and need to provide CPR is fairly low. Mm -hmm. When they actually looked at this and did the statistical modeling. The likelihood that you're going to encounter somebody with an injury that's bleeding, whether it be from a gunshot wound or a car accident or mm -hmm. somebody slipping down a hillside, is pretty pretty high. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's not really well covered in the first aid courses. Mm -hmm. This is going to help teach you to be comfortable dealing with, dealing with pretty serious wounds. And it's something that, honestly, as a trauma surgeon, I look at this and this is, this is very basic for me. But if I didn't have the training that I had, I honestly think that I would look at, I would look at some of these horrible wounds and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't want to make things worse. I don't want to do just the simple steps mm -hmm. that may help that person, that may help stem the blood loss yeah. and help us, help us to be able to save this person's life. Yes. Um, and that knowledge is powerful. And, and Sarah Beth, I think you said it earlier, like you want to empower this community. And and I think when you come across a car accident or you see somebody who is who has a life threatening injury, um, I, I know that I don't I currently having not gone through the course, <laughs> I don't have the confidence to be like, yes, I'm going to go do this. And and so um, at, I just I'm fearful I would cause more damage. And I think that's probably the norm of most people. And so I think that's why this is so powerful to equip people with an action, a simple action they can take because they've done it. They've seen it done. They've practiced it um, at the elementary level to get them to you. And so um, this, you said it's been available for about four to five years here in the area. What types of organizations, you mentioned school nurses. And so Anybody, anybody who is willing to listen to us okay. talk, churches, um, grocery stores, the mall, any staff members that work in our community and would mm -hmm. want us to, to come out and teach a class, we'd be happy to, to start building up that net network again. Um, we'd like to be able to bring people in and open a, a course on campus at LGH so people, individuals could just sign up for it and come yeah. and take that course as yeah. well. I know my office here at, at Central Marketing, we all are like, we want to do this. Mm -hmm. We want to prepare ourselves. We want to equip ourselves. Um, and, and as you hear about these horrible situations that happen around our world, but even in here in our own community and wanting to be a part of the solution and not the problem, you know. 
people slow down to look at accidents, but to be able to stop and do something that's big. Well, I'll say this too. You know, we, I, I work in a, I work in a hospital. We've got, we've got unbelievable resources. We've got a magnet that takes pictures of the inside of your body. We're actually looking at now taking these stop the bleed kits and putting them around the hospital so that if God forbid something ever happens at the hospital, that we're ready, that we have kits available for mm -hmm. people. And really simple, simple things, just packing wounds, tourniquets. I remember when I first took a first aid course, I guess it was probably in the 1990s, it was a tourniquet was the absolute last resort. And they, they, they cautioned us that not to use a tourniquet under, under almost any circumstances. <laughs> now, now we want you to use tourniquets. If, if somebody has extremity bleeding that we can stop with a tourniquet, we want you to use a tourniquet. Yeah. And as soon as the patient comes to the hospital, we evaluate whether or not that tourniquet's needed. If it's been on there for 15 or 20 minutes, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Mm -hmm. That tourniquet, we're going to take a look at that. We're going we're gonna to stop the specific bleeding vessels. Mm -hmm. But if that person's already been sitting there bleeding for a long time, that's not always something that's salvageable. But if it's something, if it's somebody's arm and we get a tourniquet around it, we get, we just, we make that bleeding stop. That's something that we can, that you we can, can save that. their life in almost every circumstance. Wow. Well, I think a lot of the fear was the push against tourniquets was that people would lose those limbs if you put a tourniquet on. And that's mm -hmm. not what we've seen at all. Yeah. Um, people who end up losing limbs, lose them because of the, the injury to the limb, not because of the tourniquet that was in place. Okay, so there's some miseducation here. Yes. Yeah, and that was the teaching for a long time. And yeah. really what changed that was when the military looked at their experience and they said, we are, you know, I, I think it, you know, it was some, somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% of, of people mm -hmm. who died in combat were from extremity injuries. And so as they started pushing the tourniquets out and pushing for mm -hmm. tourniquet use, in around 2007, the, the military was completely field the tourniquets to all of their frontline combat units um, and encourage and encourage that usage. I remember when I was when I was in, we were trained to put we carry two tourniquets so that God forbid we lost two limbs, we could put the tourniquets on. Yeah. Um, and we were we were trained to put them on ourselves, to put them yes. on our friends. We were we you know, we were trained to use them yeah. all the time. And it saved lives. Saved mm -hmm. That is the Absolutely. goal. Yes. yes. So um, you guys have some props. Yes. I'm very yes. excited to see. Yes. And so now these are specific items used in this course, correct? Okay. So these are not just specific items that are used in this course. And you can hear the Velcro uh, un un unsnapping now. Um, but these are, these are Velcro tourniquets. They've got some plastic snaps. They've got a plastic rod on them. Not only are these used in this course, but if somebody comes in with uncontrolled hemorrhage from, from a limb mm -hmm. into the emergency department, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for one of these tourniquets. Yeah. And we have them in the emergency department. So you simply, you open it up into a big loop. You undo the Velcro fasteners and you simply slide it over the extremity. Avoid putting it over top of a joint and make mm -hmm. sure that it's above the injury. And then just pull it tight. And yeah. you can hear it. You can hear the Velcro kind of cinching down. Yeah. And then once it's tight, there's another piece of Velcro and a... Uh, and kind of a plastic stick on it. And you just simply twist that. It can go on top of clothing. It's, it's, just, uh, it's just about as effective on top of clothing yeah. as it is underneath clothing. And you just keep twisting it until most of the bleeding stops. Really, we like to say the bright red bleeding stops. Okay. Um, but, but keep twisting it until most of the bleeding stops. There's usually still a little bit of bleeding that continues yeah. and that's and that's okay that can be stopped usually with a little bit of pressure yeah. but once that's twisted and it's tight then there's some plastic kind of c loops in there that you can just that you can just slide that plastic stick into and that will hold it in place and you put the piece of velcro on top of that and so for those who are listening i love how like you just explained that in such a way to give them a visual there's even a place that says time if you would write when you put it on i'm assuming we would write, you'd write when, when you put it on. And that's, that's helpful to know, particularly for long periods of time when the tourniquet's been up. But again, we, we are not going to make any decisions about amputating a limb or anything based on the, how long the tourniquet has been up. Okay. 
Wow. And you were able to just put that on your own arm. I mean, that was so doable. <laughs> It's it, it is, but it's one of those it's one of those things. And you can hear the Velcro again as I'm yeah, as I'm undoing yeah. this. You know, it's one of those things that that I just I just think that when you come across something, your first reaction is to freeze. Yeah. Your second reaction is to be so afraid of causing damage, of causing of causing more harm. Yes. And, you know, while while these things, anything that we do can cause can cause some mm -hmm. damage um, it, if that. If there's really a lot of bleeding, you're not going to cause more problems by putting one of these on. Yeah. Is it painful? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, you know, when you get it tight enough, it's it, it, it will be it will be a little bit gonna uncomfortable. It. It's going to be uncomfortable. I mean, you are cutting off the blood flow to that to that limb. Mm -hmm. But that means it's working too, and right? It means it's working. It's doing yes. what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. So, and and, and you know, that's something a non-medical professional. You don't want, to, like, am I hurting you? Right. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Yes. But to know that even the slightest bit of pressure is good. It's supposed to, they're supposed to feel that on some level. It's going to be painful. Um, so that is good to know. And I'm sure there's so much, like, this is just one small portion of, I'm sure, what the course is. This is, this is kind of, I guess this is kind of the big gun. This is, this is yeah. the big gun that you would use when you can't get the bleeding under control. Mm -hmm. There's a couple steps beforehand just simply uh, packing the wound or applying pressure. Um, those are things that we should be doing first. Mm -hmm. But if there's really arterial bleeding, if there's if there's massive bleeding, then we probably are going to need to step up to the tourniquet. Yeah. But again, I mean, this is this is kind of the big gun. And we talk about what to do in these situations in the course. Then we we go over in granular detail mm -hmm. how to treat these wounds how to escalate mm -hmm. up to from you know from simple bandages to packing to tourniquets we talk about some different things that they, they can do and then we go through scenarios with you know i i don't i i haven't seen the actual the actual pieces that we use but there's some arms with wounds on them and they've got different ways of 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 pumping the blood through them of pumping oh, a wow. a a fluid through them so that we can simulate some bleeding so it gives you a little bit of that stress response yes. and a yes. little bit of that feedback to actually just just hopefully if something like this god forbid happens in front of you that you will be able to mm -hmm. do something that is going to be helpful that is going to help that person survive yeah i love that that's so powerful thank you both for coming in and for having this very important discussion and talking about this education that is available. I think that's the crazy part. Like this is available now. Like we can equip ourselves now to do this. Um, and so we talked a little bit about where it is in um, churches and schools and other like community organizations. And so I think for those of you who are listening, um, a very important takeaway is um, Think about where you are in public spaces, um, whether you're going into the community or, you know, think about if you're going to the grocery store, like equip yourself. But also if you wanted to work to equip a certain organization or community, um, you can do that. So the way that you do that is you can go to stopthebleed.org. And there's information on the website for you to check out. You can also email stopthebleed at centralhealth.com. And that I think is so cool because so many people, they want to have a conversation. They want, they want something that is specific to them delivered back to them. They want to be able to con connect with a person. Um, and so this is a way where you can do that. So go to their website or email someone, whatever your desired preference of communication is, but do it. Um, and, and get that ball rolling. And so, um, so yeah, those are the ways you guys can get involved. And for those of you who do work here at Centra, and I love that we have a community where we can um, lean on each other to learn these things as well. Um, one thing that kind of struck me is I work you know, walking, walking distance to the hospital. And so if anything should happen, I just, I, I feel like I'm in a safe environment. Um, but that is still a walk to the hospital. And so equipping myself even here down the street is so important. And so never take um, your your circumstance, never let your circumstance keep you from doing something that could potentially save a life. So um, thank you guys for listening. And thank you guys again for being here. Um, we hope you guys will join us again on And So Much More. <laughs>